Hello and welcome to the Focus Podcast for Best Western Hotel members. My name is Alex Wilmot and today I'm here with Graham Usher, who's the General Manager of the Monk Bar Hotel in York. Graham, how's it going? Really well. Really Good. Well how's things shaping up for the summer? Apart from the lack of sun, <coughs> it's, it's been fantastic. Um, today's the longest day and I think it'll be uh, a downward spiral from there after. <laughs> but, uh, Don't seem, say that! We seem to have missed summer. Yeah. Um, but the, the, the summer's been really good. We've had... Uh, um, a good turnout to the city so far. Our footfall's up year on year, so actually that's a, a, a good, a positive move for us. But yeah. um, as the market becomes so short lead, <clears throat> it becomes incredibly stressful. You know, sort of ten days, seven days out, three days out when bookings are so short lead. So it's certainly it's proved very successful for us this year, and and uh, the summer. Or the the lack of the, the rest of the uh, the I call it the months rather than summer um, <laughs> sort of July August September look very positive for us yeah so. well that's good that's really good because you know some some people are saying you know that it's a hard summer for for different things especially things like weddings and things but are you, have you found that at all uh, we've had a complete opposite this year we've seen an increase of twenty five percent of our weddings um, since two thousand and seven um, so we've hit twenty five percent more than we did last year wow. the year prior to that so. Um, I th- certainly think if you've got the right package at the right price and the marketplace, then then there are weddings still to be had. Um, so that's the secret, then. That's the secret, you know, just sort of I guess the effort or, or you know getting getting the getting the wind behind your back sort of thing. I think so. If you have a, a real detailed year approach to weddings, uh, we have a six weekly uh, wedding open day. Um, so if we can't direct people into the building when it's set for a, for a, a wedding, then we'll get you in you know, within a six week gap, six week window to make sure that you've seen it and we'll book it. But I think you have to be really um, motivated to to get those dates in the diary to get people through the doors um, to to jump on the lead as it comes, you know, through the phone or through an email or off, off the website. Mm. Um, you know, I don't I don't think there's been a downturn in weddings <clears throat> certainly over the last couple of years. Um, some venues, I think, have struggled, mm. um, but I think mainly they're the ones that were probably at the top of their game when, um, you know, before the, a recession started or, or we thought wedding numbers were dropping off. So, but certainly, you know, the last couple of years we've seen a, a good increase. That's year brilliant. Year, and, and we're currently the same pace in front for next year, so we're twenty five percent ahead or thereabouts for for next year's numbers on the books already. So that's fantastic. I'm walking around the hotel today, and I know other Best Western staff have said the same thing, and 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 guests and visitors that. The staff here at the Monk Bar Hotel seem really engaged and, and just chatting with them, they really enjoy working here. What's the secret to keeping the staff engaged, You know, keeping them on board? What sort of things do you put in practice? A number of the team have been here since <clears throat> uh, 1990. Wow. Um, so three months after the hotel opened. So it's, you know, uh, Angela in accounts is, is our longest serving member of the team um, with her 23, 4 years service. Um, but that's the same across most departments. So our head housekeeper's been here for 10 years. Her number two's been here for seven years. Our head reception's been here for six years. Mm. Um, you know, our head chef's been here for nearly eight years. And it's it's one of those venues that once you start, you you, you know, you never you never go anywhere in that sense, in a really lovely way. So it just really holds our family unit together. In the office alone, I think, just between three people, um, there's 12, 22, there's 30 years service between three people alone in, in the sales office. And, you know, people come... Customers come back to us year on year for that service, and, and you know, irrelevant of the product, the property, the location, it's all about the people. Mm. Um, and, and and because of that, to, to keep these people and to keep them kind of motivated and, and on the top of their game is a, is a full time job, I suppose. Because not that you get complacent, but you get over familiar with where you are. Mm. <clears throat> um, so no, I think over the last 12, 18 months, certainly we've we've worked to um, really empower the team and and um, ensure that. That they're making their decisions and controlling, you know, their their way forward as opposed to you know us pushing out. You know, we do push IK and we do push the standards of our delivery. However, that's got to be personal. It's got to be individual. Um, so losing that sense of roboticness and you know arrival and reception has got to be individual, and that sort of keeps these people enjoying what they do. Um, so yeah, so uh, we also introduced last year a really great appraisal system. Um, so rather than being a tick box and a process, it's mm. a it's a managed document that's personal to their progression personally um, in and out of work. Right. Um, so their objectives aren't just for the business; they're for them individually. So we hope that that part of that process of their development here is also outside of work. Um, yeah. And that that's really important. You know, you can get um, sucked into the industry. I think a bit too much if you're not yeah. careful. So uh, we always ensure that they've got personal 
um, goals within within their, their year that's reviewed, and, yeah. and that's really important, I think, to for HD certainly then to to progress that down to their teams. Um, but I also think to get great people, you have to offer great service, mm. um, and the two come side by side. Um, if you have an average hotel, you will have average people, and so it's it's trying to keep <coughs> trying to keep the momentum going that, that people yeah. enjoy them what they do. Um, but I think a simple thank you means the world, really. To be fair, absolutely. Um, well, that's brilliant. Well, here, here in York, I mean, you, you're in one of the, the most, I guess, historically rich cities in, in England. Not, I wouldn't argue it's the most, but it's definitely up there. And there's a lot of traditions, and it's a traditional place. How do you sort of honour the tradition of the hotel here in York in such a historical location, but also try and stay ahead of the game, try and bring new things in, and always looking forward? How do you balance that? York has amazing history, and, and, and I've been lived in around York for... 14 years now, um, but never really been in the city properly, um, opposed to when, when, apart from when I've been at the Monk Bar. And you kind of fall in love with it, become an ambassador alone for the city you live in and breathe with all the time. Um, but it's nice, it doesn't have the the city size that you'd have in, in other larger areas, so it's, it's quite compact and, and obviously you know, carries amazing, amazing history. Um, the, the monk bar history though is is slightly different with regards to you know we're a collection of of kind of shops and old buildings connected together through the years um so our history is a you know part of the restaurant used to be a butcher shop um a bike shop um where you get your shoes repaired and your keys cut um and they've got obviously you know all been in kind of made into now what the monk bar is um and I think we have to ensure that. I mean, we just finished uh, finished our, our five year repaint, <clears throat> the whole building externally. Wow! Um, and that that comes with a cost, but that also comes with having amazing property at the end of it. And that's really important to ensure that um, you know the rest of the city take great pride in, in where they are and whether what they <clears throat> what they look like and what they do. Um, and we really have to you know keep in our game to ensure that. Um, although we're, you know, every hotel's wanting a refurb, and every hotel always, you know, has its has its issues bedroom wise and other bits and pieces. Um, however, there are things that you can, you know, make sure are, are the best at mm. what you do. So, and to York, that's really important. You know, people complain. I saw in the paper the other day because there's three bin bags outside Monkgate. I mean, good grief, <coughs> God forbid. <laughs> um, however, to York, that's really important. Yes, yeah. that that made page four of the newspaper that that, that there was rubbish in in three bags outside wow. on, outside on the street. Um, so yeah, and and then really to ensure that that what we offer is very York based. So we have a York um, coffee roaster that's up the road. Right. So he makes a, a a blend of coffee for us and and roasts two days before we need it and brings it on site. Same with our you know having order in sausages and and local bacon and free range eggs and all that kind of stuff to ensure that that York as a marketplace is used for us internally as well as as where we're we're selling to market also. So. Yeah, well that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Um, I guess finally, as we as we wrap up, uh, what about the staff here? Have you got any sort of quirky staff members? Because I, I find that is is one of the best things about Best Western as a sort of as a brand and as a family is that the, the staff have personality. And I know it's in our tagline. I know it's you know hotels of personality, but I love it when I find someone who's got a real bit of, you know quirky personality. Have you got any anyone who keeps you on your toes? Anyone here this you know comes to mind? I think it's the length of service that a lot of people have here. We have, we we have we could probably list them off of people with personality because we know them as part of our family, mm. um, and we know their their what makes them tick and what makes them happy and what makes them sad. But um, we took on a, a a girl last year, um, Ellie, in our sales office, and and Ellie joined us as a reservations coordinator with no no skill at all or no experience in in taking reservations. But her personality was such a great fit that we had to to get to join the team. Mm. Um, and when she started, we we um, learned that she used to do stand up comedy. Oh right, okay, yeah. <clears throat> and there's something going back to to our appraisals. Uh, she wants to get back into. So one of her aims this year is to to get back in um, to the stage doing um, something throughout the next year. Um, but she's she's like a mini Miranda. Um, <laughs> and if and if you could watch Miranda on TV, um, with her facial expressions and the things she says and the things she acts out, then then that's Ellie in our office. And wow. It, it adds a real character actually. To be fair, she was on holiday. Last week, and and the office was lost without her. So, right. Um, yeah, a real, real keeps on, on a, keeps a smile on everyone's face. Anyway, put it that way. That's brilliant, Graham. Thanks very much for coming on to the Focus Podcast. I hope you have a great summer, mate. Thank you very much.